SCY, what is up? It is McKay, your online youth lead. We are back for week four of We Are SCY, talking about, if you've been around here for a while, who is your one? Who are you going to bring into the family of Sandals Church Youth to learn more about God, to learn more about the image we've been made in, um, and how to carry this message out to all of our friends and our campuses. I have a very special guest today named Delaney. She is a good friend. She attends the Palm Avenue campus with me, and I think she has a good word for us. So let's jump on into the message. Hello, my name is Delaney, and I am one of the 12th grade girls. Um, for the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about um, what it means to share our faith with others in this series, We Are SCY. And as this week, we're going to be just talking about how to share our faith and having it be more than words with actions and words and our emotions and love for other people. Um, so, yeah. So um, I'm going to start off with a question. Who is your one? Who would you describe um, the person or who would you say is the person that you're going to invite to church if I ask? Um like, is that someone that you immediately have a person, or is there someone that you just don't know and it's going to take some time? That's totally okay. For me, I never really had that kind of person or knew who that person was, um, especially in, like, middle school, in the early years of high school. Um, but I, as I was growing up and as I was learning, it really made me discover that there are some things that I needed to know and some things that I realized. And some of those things are that sharing my faith is more than just saying words. It's more than just how I say stuff, where I say stuff, when I say stuff. And it's more about the empathy that I have for someone, the love that I have for them, and my actions and behavior towards them. Another thing is also learning that the guidance and all the things that I'm learning in my personal life from church and youth group and outside of that also applies to how I reflect and mentor and guide that person. Um, so in Matthew 7, 7 through 8, it says, Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who seeks finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. If God hasn't given that one person to you and you have no idea who that is, that is totally okay. Sometimes all it takes is praying and asking God to send that person and for you to wait patiently and focus on yourself and see what opportunities you can find to have and discover who that person is. Um, so another thing that's also really helpful is learning that my faith grows when God sends me to reach others. So this past year, I have had the amazing opportunity to mentor and disciple one of my best friends, Elizabeth, and she, um... We were friends, but we weren't that great of friends, and it was really cool because I kept inviting her to church, and I was like, I want to try and see who I can get and who can come, and after a couple weeks, she finally was like, actually, I would love to, and so we went and got Starbucks before church, and we went, and it was like so much fun, and then she kept coming, and she started coming to youth group and all this stuff, and we just started to grow in that relationship, and I remember it was Chris, it was um, what was it? It was New Year's Eve, and we went to church that morning because typically we go to PM um, in the evenings, and there wasn't PM that day. And so we were like, how about we go have coffee together after church? And so we did, and I think we spent two, maybe three hours together just talking, and she would ask me questions, and we talked about camp and what it means to have a relationship with God and who God is and all of this stuff because I've grown up in church my whole life. I've been a Christian since I was seven and all of this stuff, and so it's really cool to help mentor someone when I've been through this whole like scenario and situation and I've had this in my life and getting to share that with her was really cool and in that discipleship and in that process and mentorship with her I got to see that major progression in my relationship and in my life with God because I was helping someone else discover that as well and just seeing how much changed in both of our lives and how much like growth we both experienced on different ends of the spectrum when it comes to our relationships and our 
personal lives. So another thing that's also really hard about sharing our faith and like why it's really hard is because it's just easier not to. I really would not like to have to walk up to a stranger and say, hey, I'm a Christian. Here's everything you need to know. Um, but sometimes that's what that's what God is calling us to. And sometimes you just have to because you know that God's going to help you and give you the guidance and strength to do that. And in Deuteronomy 31, 6, it says, So be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic before them. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. you will neither f- he will neither fail you nor abandon you. So this just goes about having... This tells us about the confidence that we have when it comes to sharing our faith. And this is visible proof that God is going to be with us in those hard moments when we really don't want to. A couple weeks ago in the middle of summer, I got to um, be a part of a training at one of the campuses and with one of my friends. And we... um, At the end of this training, it was a gospel conversation training, and we were learning how to share the Bible and how to share the gospel and all this stuff. And at the end of the training, um, like the second half of it, it was all about going out in groups and like praying over people and telling them about your faith. And both of us, when we heard that, we were like, we really don't want to do that because it was just the two of us. We knew a couple other people um, and we didn't really want to do that. And so like... That was a hard thing to have to pray, like, silently by myself, like, God, I really don't want to do this, but can you give me the strength to be able to go out and, like, pray over these people and share my faith when it's really scary? And speaking of it being scary, another thing is, like, comfort, Um, of, like, why it's so hard is because it's out of our comfort zone and we are drawing attention to ourselves when typically we don't want to do that. We want to stick to the shadows and just kind of fit in with everyone else. But that's what's so cool about it is even though it is uncomfortable, you're able to look at the stories from the Bible and see where God and where Jesus fit into those positions and where we're able to watch and see and read and all these things of like, oh yeah, Jesus went and fed the 5,000. He was the center of attention in that. And we get to use that as motivation for, okay, I'm going to go out and pray over someone, or I'm going to share my faith with someone because Jesus was the example of that. And because we care about it, we can't, I can't reach all, but I can reach one. In Matthew 4, 18 through 20, it says, One day, as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew, throwing a net into the water, for they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets and followed him. So this is one of the... um, Not representation. (laughs) So this is one of the examples of where Jesus was out in the center of attention, he had called to two people. I don't know if he knew them or not, but he had called out to two fishermen who were in the middle of fishing, and he was like, come, I'm going to show you a better way. And that's what's so cool about sharing your faith with your friends and with other people is that you get to show them this life that you live in and how just amazing it is and how they get to be a part of that if they say yes. And with that, you don't have to start with everyone. You can start with one person. If there's um, someone at your school, if there's someone in your friend group, someone at youth group or church, there's so many ways that you can just go out and like ask for a favor. Say, hey, can you hold my jacket real fast while I go and give... um, like go and give this thing to my friend real fast and then ask them how their day is and then start a conversation from there. Like, oh, I have church tomorrow. Like, would you like to come or something? Just start small and then that can lead to something so amazing. And like another thing about that is just that God's going to be with us and he's going to be helping us through that. And he's going to be guiding us and helping us through that multiplication process and guidance is so helpful with when it comes to your leaders and all the people in your life and just everything from there. 
Um, I have weekly coffee dates with my youth group leader and we sit and talk about anything and everything. And it's been really helpful over this last year to have those coffee dates and I can ask her questions and get the help that I need in my personal life. So that way I'm able to help my friends like Elizabeth and um, and even be a better friend and like guidance. That's not the right word. Um, and mentor for my friend Kara, who I see a lot of the time and we're really close. And so I get to be able to help mentors and also be one, which is really cool. Um, and like, you just have to start somewhere. That's what's so cool about it is like one person is all it takes. Um, and with that, I just want to close and say, who in your life can you start praying for today? Who can you invite to church, to youth group, to hang out in your friend group and start to have those conversations to potentially have a transformation in your life, in their life, and just an overall like transformative life with Jesus. So thank you. Am I praying or what's happening? I don't know. That, I don't know why I said thank you, but I did. No, that's fine. <laughs> Do you want to pray? Sure. Okay. okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you just for the opportunity that we have to just be able to share faith with others and um, get to show them the amazing life that you have provided for us. I just want to pray that you can help all of us to just be bold and have the confidence to just start somewhere and share our faith and just know that you're going to be helping and guiding us and that even though it's really scary and it's out of our comfort zone, it's something that is so cool because Jesus was the example of that and the amount of miracles that he performed is so amazing to read and just reminisce on because we're able to see how we can reflect those in our daily lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.